Hello everyone. Welcome back to the video lecture series of basic electrical and electronics engineering. In this session, we are going to discuss the nature of induced EMF. In the previous lectures, we have discussed how to generate the EMF and also how to find the direction of induced EMF with the help of Fleming's right hand rule and Lenz law. In this session, we are going to discuss uh, the various types of induced EMF. The EMF can be induced in the conductor practically by two ways according to which they are classified as in these two. First one is dynamically induced EMF and the second one is statically induced EMF. Okay, the word dynamically indicates that something is moving or something is changing and are having a physical movement. Okay, uh, having a having a physical movement of something. Okay, when the EMF is induced due to a physical movement of either conductor or flux is known as dynamically induced EMF. That means EMF is induced due to the physical movement of either conductor or flux. Either fl conductor is moving or either flux is moving. And when, uh, the, when the induced EMF is produced due to a physical movement of conductor or flux is known as dynamically induced EMF. Okay. And the second is statically induced EMF. In this case, the word statically indi indicates that that the conductors and uh, the field, the magnetic field, both are stationary. No, nothing is moving, no physical movement is there. Also, uh, we are, uh, if there is no physical movement also, we are getting the induced EMF. This is a special case where uh, the conductor as well as the magnetic field is, is stationary and uh, even though they are stationary, the, e the EMF is induced in the conductor and that is that EMF is known as statically induced EMF. We know the three requirements for uh, for production of EMF. First one is conductor, second one is magnetic field and third one is relative motion between conductor and field. Here relative motion uh, is obtained with the help of this physical moment of either conductor or flux. But in case of statically induced EMF, how to how this relative motion is obtained? This relative motion between conductor and magnetic field is obtained with the help of current with the help of current how the change in the emf is induced due to the change in flux by increasing or decreasing current and not due to any physical movement of conductor or flux that means the change in flux is obtained with the help of current by varying the current either increasing or decreasing the current by varying this current uh, we vary the flux and if we vary the flux with respect to time the emf can be induced that means the relative motion between conductor and magnetic field can be obtained with the help of varying current also okay and if the emf induced uh, by this phenomena then it is known as statically induced emf okay we will discuss this both in detail in in this today's session we are going to discuss dynamically induced emf in the next session we will discuss this statically induced emf okay so let's get started the dynamically induced emf is the emf which is induced due to uh, involvement of physical movement of the conductor okay or either flux the figure here shows that here this is the magnet here north pole is there here south pole is there and this is stationary the 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 magnetic field or the magnet are not moving but this is the conductor which is um, held by held by this man is moving from top to bottom and from top to bottom and there is a physical movement of this conductor so the emf induced which is indicated by this galvanometer by the pointer deflection is nothing but dynamically induced emf because there is a physical movement of conductor is involved okay this dynamically induced emf e is given by expression b into l into b sin theta hood okay this is the expression for dynamically induced emf where e is the induced emf b is the max uh, magnetic flux density produced by this magnet l is the length of conductor placed in a magnetic field this is the length of conductor which is actually placed in a magnetic field is only considered this is the length of conductor which is placed in a magnetic field from this to this from here to here this is the length of 
conductor placed in a magnetic field and this v is the velocity of conductor because here conductor is moving field is stationary that means magnetic stationary but conductor is moving so v will be the velocity of conductor motion meter in meter per second okay the sine theta theta is the angle between plane of flux and the direction of conductor movement b is the magnet magnetic flux density l is the length of conductor v is the velocity of conductor as it is moving and theta is the angle between plane of flux and direction of conductor movement uh, here the direction of conductor movement is what from top to bottom from top to bottom here from top to bottom this is the direction of motion of conductor okay and the plane of flux is what this is the plane of flux this is the plane of flux this is the plane of flux and this is the direction of conductor movement so the angle between these two will be nothing but theta theta is the angle between direction of flux direction of a conductor motion and the plane of flux okay also on that theta also the the induced emf the magnitude of induced emf will differ okay this is the first case of dynamically induced emf let's see second case here the conductor is moving and field is stationary another case is what the conductor is stationary here conductor is is wound in this number of turns and this is the galvanometer and this is the magnet here conductor is stationary but magnet is moving this is another case of a dynamically induced emf in this case also physical movement of a magnet is present so the induced emf which is indicated by this pointer uh, on the scale of this galvanometer will be also the dynamically induced emf only because here physical movement of magnet is involved okay this is also dynamically induced emf then let's solve a numerical based on uh, this uh, fact that a dynamically induced emf how how it is induced and uh, what is the expression of that question is that a conductor of 1.5 meter length moves at a right angle to a uniform magnetic field of flux density 1 tesla okay flux density is what 1 tesla with a velocity of 100 meter per second calculate the emf induced in it and find also the value of induced emf when conductor moves at an angle of 30 degree to the direction of field here we have to calculate two different emf induced when when it is moving at right angle first and for second case when it is moving at 30 degrees okay so first we will write the given data we have to find here the word moves indicate that this is the uh, question of dynamically induced emf because the conductor is actually moving there is a physical moment of conductor which is placed in a magnetic field so this is a question of dynamically induced emf in this way we can identify, identify the question uh, so it is a dynamically induced emf and length is given 1.5 meter so written a 1.5 meter the magnetic flux density 1 tesla so 1 tesla here small v velocity is 100 meter per second given so small v equals to 100 meter per second here two conditions are given one we have to find the emf when the angle when the conductor is moving at right angle right angle means what 90 degrees so theta one is 90 degree first case is there and second case is what conductor is moves at an angle of 30 degree so theta 2 will be 30 degree so uh, here we have to find first e1 when theta1 is 90 degree and e2 when theta2 is 30 degree okay so let's find it step one first we will calculate the emf induced when theta1 is 90 degree when the conductor is moving at a right angles to the plane of flux the plane of flux the angle between suppose this is the this is the plane of flux suppose this is the plane of flux then the direction of conductor motion is what either upward or either downward that means the angle between them is 90 degree in 90 degree then 
we will calculate the induced EMF for this condition. We know that for dynamically induced EMF, we have expression B L V sin theta. Here theta 1 is there, so we have written it theta 1. B is gi uh, given as 1 Tesla, L is 1.5 given, uh, velocity V is 100 meter per second also given, and sin theta 1, theta 1 also given 90 degrees, so 90 degree. So 1.5 into 1 into 1.5 into 100 into sin 90, sin 90 is 1, so the answer will be 150 volt, 150 volt. For this given data, the answer will be 150 volt. That means the magnitude of induced EMF is 150 volt for this case. Then the second case is what? Theta 2 is 30 degree. That means what? If this is the plane of flux, phi, okay, and the direction of motion is now not 90 degree, this is the conductor motion or motion of conductor and this will be the 30 degree then at this condition if the conductor uh, conductor is moving in this direction then what will happen the angle between them is 9 uh, is 30 degree here 90 degrees there 30 degrees there then again similarly industry mf we have same expression blv sine of theta 2 here theta 2 is different so blv so putting the values of bl and v sine theta 1.5 into 100 into sine of 30. We know that sine of 30 is nothing but half. The value of sine of theta is half. So 1.5 into 100 into half will be 75 volt. So 75 volt. Here in the first case when 90 degrees there 150 volt. In the second case when when first case when we have 150 volt when we have 90 degree angle between the plane of flux and the conductor motion and in the second case we will get 75 volt only when the plane of when the angle between the plane of uh, flux and the conductor motion is is 30 degree so here we can uh, conclude that the emf the magnitude of induced EMF also depends upon the angle between the plane of flux and the conductor motion. That means angle also uh, also affect the magnitude of induced EMF. Okay. This is all about the dynamically induced EMF and how to find that and the parameters uh, which differ the magnitude of induced EMF dynamically. So. This is all about the dynamically induced EMF. In the next session, we are going to discuss the statically induced EMF. Okay. For that, stay tuned and keep learning. Thank you.